What is going on everyone and welcome back to r slash entitled parents now in today's first story an entitled mum sells a three thousand dollar guitar for fifty dollars because her kid says it doesn't work now her kid doesn't actually play guitar but he does play guitar hero though so therefore she just straight up believes him and sells it for 50 bucks it's a pretty mental story guys this one and it has a lot of twists as we go along as you'll see so let's just get straight into it but just quickly guys at the time of recording we are just 6,000 subscribers away from 600k i promise you i will stop asking for this big milestone as soon as we hit it but i can't not you know we're 6k away from like a massive 600k milestone if you are new around here just hit that button for me you can always unsubscribe later if you don't enjoy this video but you'll love it i promise just as soon as i get into the story that is subscribe let's go Entitled mum sells me a broken guitar because her baby can't play it. Multiple good endings. This story happened some years ago while I was living on the East Coast. I was driving back home from a friend's house and decided to take a detour through one of the more nicer neighborhoods because it was the beginning of fall and I'm just a sucker for scenery. While driving, I just so happened to have found another thing that I go crazy for, a garage sale. With me having some money on hand, I decided that this was fate and pulled over to check it out. At first, I didn't really see anything special. Just the kind of stuff you would expect to see at any garage sale. Old furniture, clothes, DVDs, and other small items. But then, in the corner of my eye, I saw something that I just didn't expect to see. A guitar. I went in for a closer look, expecting it to be some kind of cheap beginner guitar, the kind with a brand name you don't recognize. But no, what stood before me was an actual Gibson Les Paul. Side note, to those who don't know, Gibson is a very prestigious guitar brand name, and Les Paul is possibly their most famous model type. This model of guitar is legendary for being the weapon of choice amongst god-level rock stars. Example, Slash from Guns N' Roses or Ace Frehley from Kiss. Now, back to the story. She was beautiful, and yes, I refer to guitars as she. She was gold in color with white trim and looked kind of old, but was in really good condition. But what got me in an actual state of shock was the price tag. It said the price was $50. I couldn't help but think that the person selling this forgot to add another zero to the end, as well as a one to the beginning. So I picked up the guitar and went up to the woman handling the sale to ask her about it. All right, guys, so I've just gone on the internet because, you know, I was interested to see what the actual price of a Gibson Les Paul is right now. And as you can see, it's over £2,000 roughly, and £1,500, anywhere from two to $3,000, that is. Wow. Now, this woman didn't really look like a typical entitled parent, but her attitude and body language just radiated entitlement. It was like her aura was almost made out of pure smugness and hatred for the working class. Just by talking to her, I couldn't help but feel that she was the kind of soccer mum that you would expect to yell at the coach, as well as the referee, other parents, and maybe some kids, but I digress. Excuse me, mum, can I ask about this guitar? The price says it's 50 bucks. Is that actually correct? Yes, that's correct. Well, that is an unusually good price. Is there a reason for that? Yes, it's broken. I figured someone could use it like a decoration in their man cave or something. Hearing that just broke my heart, but it also got me curious because I couldn't find anything physically wrong with it. No cracks or any other signs of damage. I started asking more questions, thinking maybe I could fix her later. However, it was at this moment that any and all logic began to die and roll down a hill away from me. Can I ask what's wrong with it? Yes, my baby can't play it. Excuse me? My son, he says it's unplayable. Oh, does he work with guitars like a technician or something? Oh, no, he can't work. My baby is only 12. Hearing that stunned me for a quick second, but I then decided to try give the benefit of the doubt. I don't know this kid, so maybe he was one of those young musical virtuosos who got accepted to Juilliard early or something. So I take it your son is musically talented then? Oh, very much so. He plays that Guitar Hero game all the time. Um, what? What? Oh, you know, the game where you play music. He's constantly playing that game and is always getting the high score on it. I kept a straight face, but my mind was turning into that meme of the woman trying to do math. Let's insert that right now for those of you that don't know. So because of that, you got him a guitar? Well, of course, when you have a child as gifted as mine, it's important that you nurture their gifts. So you think he knows what he's doing? 
He obviously knows what he's doing. So if he says it's broken, then it's broken. Listening to her talk made my brain hurt, but it also helped me decide to take the chance and buy the guitar. While paying, the woman went on a long, insane rant about how the guitar was actually a gift from the kid's late grandfather from the dad's side of the family and how he must not like her son because he gave him an old hand-me-down guitar instead of a brand new one. Hearing all this legitimately upset me, but I just decided to just keep my mouth shut and leave. After getting home, I immediately took the guitar, plugged her into my amp, retuned her, that was all the maintenance she needed, and played a few notes and chords. To my amazement, she sounded perfect. It felt as if her soul was singing the praises of freedom. I spent the rest of the day playing and tripping out that not only have I purchased my first ever Gibson Les Paul, but I also only paid $50. But the story doesn't even end here. A few weeks later, I met a friend at a party who was an actual guitar technician. I told him my story and he said if I wanted, he could appraise my guitar for me and tell me her true value. I took him up on the offer and the results blew me away. It turns out my baby was a vintage Les Paul from 1973, retailing at well over $3,000. That doesn't surprise me, guys. We saw earlier what these guitars go for. 3000 seems very, very reasonable. He then asked me if I was interested in selling, but I told him there was absolutely no way I'm ever letting go of her. But the story still doesn't end there. Shortly after getting my baby appraised, I get word from a friend who turns out works in the same office building with the husband of the entitled mum. She updates me about what she learned and apparently the entitled mum's husband is of course absolutely fuming. It turns out not only did the mum sell a very expensive guitar for just 50 bucks that was a gift from his father to her spoiled kid, but she also sold it without him knowing. Not only that, my friend informs me that the entitled mum has also been looking for me. My friend tells me that the mum wants to find me so she can demand the guitar back. Not offer to buy it or even pay back what I paid. She wants to demand that I give it back for free because apparently I scammed me out of a priceless family heirloom and robbed my child's ability to play music. My friend says she didn't say anything about her knowing me, but then asked me if I wanted her to say anything to them about who I was. I tell her absolutely not. If she wants a guitar, she can buy a new one with the money I gave her, just like she planned. And I agree that this guitar is a family heirloom, but it's my family heirloom now. Sorry, entitled mum. But if it means anything, if you are reading this, I named her Karen. Oh my God, I hope she sees this video. Incredible. <laughs> Look, guys, the thing with that guitar is it clearly was not being appreciated at all by this entitled mum or the kid. I mean, maybe by the husband, but maybe, you know, not enough to, for him to, you know, warrant saying, no, we are never, ever selling this, um, clearly. So, yeah, I think, you know, it's a better thing that OP's got the guitar now. As he said, you know, they weren't appreciating it. Now it's your family heirloom that you can keep for generations because, of course, it is such a legendary guitar. It is incredible that this, this family would sell that guitar, a $3,000 guitar, for 50 bucks it's a madness and obviously they're gonna massively regret that but um you know if you don't respect things you don't like find out about them then yeah you get you deserve what you get i mean it's literally been passed down for you like in generations through your family wouldn't that be enough to you know cause enough to not sell it even if it was worth a lot of money i don't know maybe they really need the money but you know if you're trusting your 12 year old kid because he's good at a game guitar hero that i love guitar hero as much as the next guy but because I can play guitar her, it does not mean I can play guitar, then yes, you are a, a stupid woman, I'm sorry to say, and you deserve everything you get, like making a massive $2,950 loss on a guitar. <laughs> Incredible. Now moving on to our second story, how not to react when your child finds a bit of bone. I was thinking back to an incident that happened when I was a young child. We lived in a harbour town. To either side of the harbour, the coast was lined with giant seaweed-covered, rat-infested boulders. In other words, a brilliant place to play if you were a kid. My N-mum, my narcissistic mum, often brought us there because she could let us loose on the rocks while she sunned herself in peace on a nearby beach. One day, it was in the local newspaper that a man had fallen off one of the piers and died. It happens, the waves are huge sometimes, hence the boulders. Within a week, it was mostly forgotten. My mum brought us down to play on the rocks as usual. I was playing and found what, to my childish mind, was clearly a bit of skull. The edges had been worn down and it had a few tiny barnacle things and bits of weed on it, 
but I fitted it to my head and it was exactly the same shape. I was very excited. Look, mum, I found a bit of skull. I cried out with the sort of innocent glee that only a young child can muster. I bet it's from the man who died. Of course, my claim was absolute nonsense. I was just looking for drama, trying to get attention. My excitement died as I was verbally berated, though, for daring to be thrilled with something that I found, thereby interrupting her me time. Still, I was a stubborn little thing and put it in my pocket to take home. A couple or so years later, I mentioned to someone in school, who happened to have normal parents, that I had a bit of skull in my important place, a secret hiding place. She told her parents, who told the police, who sent a very cuddly policewoman down to ask me questions and collect the bit of skull, which I wanted to keep because it made a nice bowl. It turned out that the newspaper had downplayed the details of the man's death and he'd been dashed to death near the boulders where we played. It was indeed a piece of his skull. Trump's current tantrum, not a patch on the hissy fit that my mum threw. How could I do something so disgusting? Why didn't I tell her? I've ruined her life again. You're legit telling me you found a piece of a dead man's skull who'd been murdered. I, I presume that, what did you say? You said that they downplayed the deeds of the man's death. He'd been dashed to death near the boulders where people... You found a dead man's skull and your mum was just like, you know, what? I don't care. Let me, you know, get a lovely tan. Wow. I'm blown away by that story. Honestly, I mean, I don't really know what to say. I can't believe she then says, yeah, why didn't you, why didn't you tell me? Uh, no, I tried to, mum, on the actual day that I found this bit of skull. But yeah, I, all, honestly, throughout all that story, I was thinking just like OP was thinking, I presume, for, for years. Yes, I'm joking it was a bit of skull, but in reality, you know, it's probably just a little bit of rock or whatever. But no, it, it legit was a bit of skull. I'm shocked. I'm absolutely shocked. Now moving on to our final post. Mother-in-law steals wedding decorations, mad when caught. We were married in a large pre-COVID ceremony in a local, large, beautiful hotel almost 20 years ago. We paid a small fortune for flowers as we got married post Thanksgiving, pre-Christmas with burgundy and hunter green the colors. We had fresh garland and flowers added to the already provided ribbons and bows on the chairs that were facing the aisle the wedding party walks down as well as all over the venue. It was absolutely gorgeous. The wedding went perfectly and the reception even better. My mother-in-law even left her usual fanny pack and drove his coat off for most of it. The problem was the next day. We get a call from the wedding venue saying we needed to pay one and a half thousand dollars for missing ribbons and bows that were provided. I looked at my husband and we asked if we could find them and return them, would we have to pay? They said no. I asked if I could call them back. They said sure. My husband and I looked at each other and I said we both know who took them. He looked defeated and sighed. Oh, I know. He takes his phone out and calls his mother. Hello? Morning, mum. Did you take anything from the wedding venue when you left last night? What are you talking about? This is how you greet me on your first day of marriage? Look, we just got a call from the venue that they are missing a large amount of their bows and ribbons that they provided. We owe one and a half thousand dollars if we can't return them. We can't afford that. We were 19 and 24 years old when married and just bought a house. And see previous posts about the credit card issue. Okay. Look, mum. I know you have them, just bring them back. But they belong to you anyway. They're trying to cheat you. No, they provided those. Bring them back now. What's the big deal? They can get the same things at Family Dollar. They're worth 20 bucks, not one and a half thousand. Well then go and buy them at Family Dollar and bring those ones back. And my husband hangs up. She did eventually bring them back in three large garbage bags. We took them back and got a lecture. We told them to keep the flowers and garland in exchange for the hassle. If only this was the last of it. We still hear from my mother-in-law about how mean we were. 18 years later. We are pretty much no contact now, except for large family events. So many more stories. Well, OP, if your mother-in-law genuinely thinks that stealing decorations from your wedding is a legitimate thing to do and isn't a big issue then yes i would love to hear a lot more about her so please post some more stories and hit me up because uh wow 
<laughs> how could anyone ever think that's a reasonable thing to do? I mean, how would ever actually do that? Is she thinking like when she's taking all this stuff down, obviously she knows she's stealing it, right? She can't seriously be thinking that, oh, this is uh, my, my, my sons and, and, you know, his new wives. Let me take it and just keep a hold of it until they're ready to get it. Like clearly she's not thinking that. So what is she actually doing? Literally just stealing from the wedding venue or just taking things that she thinks look nice? Literally, it was always going to come back to you and, and your husband. That's what I don't get because it was your wedding. If something goes wrong with it and, you know, someone has stolen something, the wedding venue are always going to come to you and say, something's been stolen. It's on your head. It's your party. Obviously, it's your wedding. So how can she be so dumb to not understand that this was obviously going to, you know, come back to bite her in the butt? And also the fact that you guys both knew it was your mother-in-law before, you know, you'd even found out it was genuinely her proves that she's got history of doing this and is obviously not someone that could be trusted with things that aren't hers. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of Entitled Parents. I really hope you have enjoyed it. As I said at the start of the video, we're now just like a couple, a few thousand subscribers away from 600k. Pretty insane milestone to hit. Um, Yeah, if you want to help me out, then hit this button right here just to hit the subscribe button. It's a lovely little thing to do. If you are new to my channel, then check out all my Entitled Parents videos in this lovely playlist right here. And yeah, that'll do it, guys. Hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new upload.